Chris, thank you so much for uh, joining me. It's good to, to talk to you as we're getting the new semester started in the new COVID-19 world. In a, in a very serious sense, I want you to share with us how the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted the College of Arts and Letters, specifically your college. What have you seen in terms of, of impacts to Cal? This is a semester that's going to be unlike any other. Um, and it has, had, uh, it has had some impacts on us. Like uh, the rest of the university, we will be using uh, NAU Flex technology to make sure that we have a socially distanced classroom uh, and classrooms that uh, have technology that will allow students to attend course, but virtually uh, from their homes or from their dorms, uh, from the library, wherever they may be. But there are some special challenges for Cal. And those are of a couple of different sorts, but one obvious one has to do with the fine and performing arts. Uh, we have uh, a, a large and distinguished uh, music, school of music, uh, a department of theater, and a school of art. Uh, and many of these courses demand to a greater or lesser extent that people be in the same place together. It's a new challenge to have performances uh, in which people may not be even in the same room together. Um, Learning how to do this is something that both our faculty and our students are working on right now. It, it definitely has changed the way that we think about what performance is, how we can be together, uh, and, and the nature of, of art itself. But there will also be some new use of technology. I'll give you two quick examples. Uh, one is that if you uh, go on to uh, the, the YouTube channel of the School of Music, uh, you'll see that there are uh, socially distanced choir pieces, uh, that there are quartets and, and, and violin uh, concertos that can be given uh, with people who are not performing together at the same time. At the same time, we're working on new streaming technology that will allow us to have live performances or the performers to be live on stage and yet the audience to be virtual. Um, and I'll just say that one of the things that's, that we're learning from this is that this is probably part of the future. I would love it if we could have performances, art, classes, lectures, when we have both people in, the in front of the, the speaker or in front of the performer, in front of the artist, but also be able to reach out to our alumni, to the people of Arizona and everywhere uh, through use of, uh, of technology, social media. Um, this, I think, is something that we are learning to do right now. But it's not just that. I mean, uh, every department uh, throughout the university has its own challenges. Uh, for example, uh, in language instruction, some excellent language instruction can take place online, but it's also true that it's, it's easiest if you are, you know, have some face-to-face -face instruction, and that's what we're trying to give the students as best we can. It sounds to me then, Chris, like you're finding silver linings in what are otherwise um, uh, turbulent and stormy clouds of, of the COVID-19 pandemic. New methodologies, new ways of thinking, new ways of of educating students at Northern Arizona University and the College of Arts and Letters that, as you said, forced upon you because of the pandemic, but perhaps moving forward, even when we get past the pandemic, things that will generally and overall improve the educational experience for students at NAU. Am I, am I close with this? Really? We have known that this moment is coming when we need to make better use of the technology that's available to us. Um, what, what we didn't know is how quickly we would have to get on top of that. Um, but also now that, now that students understand how to use the technology as faculty understand how to adapt their teaching styles, whatever it is that they're teaching, um, I think that this is going to become a, a, a powerful tool not that we want to move the university entirely online, um, but that to make sure that we are meeting students' needs, uh, being maximally flexible, um, and making ourselves as available as we can be to, to students who are here on the mountain campus, but also who might not be able to come to class every single day for whatever reason. What is it about Cal that makes it so special at NAU? Uh, what makes Cal meaningful is the commitment that our faculty have to teaching um, everything from the classics to creative writing to history to philosophy to the arts and on and on. As long as we can look back into human history, uh, people have been creating music, 
art, theater, that is actually trying to, to articulate the world they see around them, to make sense of the world they see, they see around them, and to last beyond their own lifetimes. So, you know, from the long-term perspective, uh, this is something that actually is part of humanity. I know this all sounds kind of highfalutin, but in fact, uh, it's part of, part of people's everyday lives. Uh, people are, are wondering, you know, what happened in the last pandemic? Well, uh, the last pandemic was in 1918. They want to talk about history. People want to talk about how can we make sense of how we're feeling right now? Well, uh, people have been uh, thinking about that, writing about that, and, 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 and creating art about that in other contexts and even in this context. So it, it is very much, uh, it's not just sort of a, a nice thing or a cherry on top of one's education. It is, I think, in a real sense, something that we can study carefully and think with the great thinkers uh, to understand our current time on the planet, basically. Let's pretend I'm a student and I'm thinking of coming to NAU and being a part of and studying in the College of Arts and Letters. Sell me. Why do I want to come to NAU and study in the College of Arts and Letters? We all know that uh, today's students, when they graduate, are going to have not just one job over the course of their working lives, but they're going to have multiple jobs. Indeed, the jobs that uh, students have five years from now, we only vaguely understand. So how can we prepare students for this reality, this job market in today's world? There are a lot of different ways, but one of them is to make sure that people have the creativity, the suppleness of thinking, that they, that they are excellent readers, excellent at self-expression, that they have those tools in their quiver to, to have multiple jobs and to excel no matter where life may take them. So whether they decide to become majors in Cal and uh, become teachers and performers and CEOs, attorneys, physicians, uh, that's fine. But even if they are from other colleges and they just are taking a handful of courses, maybe they want to take a minor in Cal, maybe they want to just take the courses that they need to take for liberal studies. Our job is to make sure that we are preparing them for whatever might come their way. And the way to do that is by developing critical thought, developing their ability for self-expression, developing good reading, writing, and speaking skills, these are saleable skills uh, that employers want very badly. We might not know exactly right now how they'll be deployed, but I can tell you that no matter where their careers take them, they will be deployed. Dean Boyer, College of Arts and Letters here at NAU. Good luck here in the new semester, in the new academic year. This is going to be a special year, but it's going to be a really great year. And I appreciate you giving me this chance to talk with you and with your viewers. Thanks, Chris. Have a good one. You too. Take care.